welcome back to the Life and Times of Captain Barney Miller podcast. I'm your host, Mike White. Joining me, of course, is the rookie, Mr. Chris Dashu. Oh, no. Boy, that, that nickname has nothing to do with what we're about to talk about, and I am so, so sad that that is the case. Yes, we're doing it, folks. We're taking one episode. That's all we can handle. One episode, we're going to be talking about the two seasons, well, season and a half of Fish, the spinoff of Barney Miller. We figured we had to talk about it. We're taking yeah. the bullet for you people here. <laughs> Well, and here's the thing. Uh, we had talked about this a lot. I mean, we've mentioned it with Otto. We've mentioned it with Richard. We've talked about this idea of let's cover this at some point, but we knew it was going to be hard, if not impossible, to find. And it is impossible to find. I, I believe a generous fan or Redditor or what was this on? We we found you found this, right? You found the files. But somebody sent him to you? Someone well, sent something to us at one point, right? One of our listeners told me where we could get these files because it was available. Uh, so the first season, just so people know, total clarity, first season is part of the DVD box set of Barney Miller. When they reissue this thing on Blu-ray, I'm not sure if they'll include Fish. I'm not sure if they'll include both seasons of Fish. But I'd be the surprised season, if they didn't. Well, yeah, but the, yeah, especially since they remastered, well, I don't know if they remastered. But it's but one it, of those comprehensive type things. Yeah. I mean, if it's like, I mean, because Shout Factory is the one who put the series out. So I feel like if they were to do like a up, up convert of the show, it might be something worth just ephemera having on the disc. Maybe. Yeah. But I don't think that this one is worth the, <laughs> the juice <laughs> is not worth the squeeze, let's say. No. So, so continuing on, we got a... Uh, I found two episodes through a torrent site, um, and that was tough to get those to download. Finally got them. One of our listeners said, hey, you can get this via a Canadian site. Uh, they stream these episodes. So I tried to download stuff from there, was unable to. And then one day, I just happened to find that both seasons were available as a torrent and got those. And I don't know why. I don't know how they came up with the second season and... Second season, um, I will say there's no like, you know, little icon in the corner. It's not like they were taped off of TV or something. Spotlights, baby. Are you a fan? No, none of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's my not, favorite. Are you a winner? Not like that uh, copy of Long Legs I just downloaded. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Though, yeah, we, I didn't watch every single episode because my God. <laughs> because you're not a fucking, because you're not, because you don't have, best I can tell, penises and heads in your freezer. That's oh, why. It's, it's wild how bad this is. So, two seasons. Fish, we've talked about it. We've theorized about this. We have the two young kids that he had had on uh, on Barney Miller uh, for two episodes. We saw these guys. It was Victor and... Kreutzer and Jilly. That's right. The yeah. one who gets knocked up off screen as a 16-year-old, which is a very yes. dark ending to this story. <laughs> very. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, John Cassini, not my favorite actor. He looks like a little mobster guy. Oh, and... oh what are you talking about? Oh. Hey, I'm a little gangster. What are you talking about? Hey, hey, yo, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and both of the girls, did, uh, Jilly and uh, what's the other one? Diane. They, they're basically the same character. Like there's yeah. no difference between these. Like there's one episode that I was watching where uh, Denise comes there. Sorry, Jilly comes down and she's just like, what are you doing? You wearing my shirt? And then the other one's like, well, it looks better on me. And I'm like, oh my God, these two are the same person. This and then is John wild. Cassisi's in the background just going, oh, oh, oh hey, hey, yo, oh, oh. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go uh, well, what are you doing, little uh, Todd Bridges' is Loomis? What, what, I'm going to be so funny with you. We're going to trade lines here. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, oh, dear. And then dear. Todd Bridges just screams the entire time. Like every single line. And it all has to be racial stuff. It's all like, my people are being persecuted, man. What are you talking about? That's why I'm in a gang. I'm I'm nine years old and I'm in a gang already. I'm like, whoa, kid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. Uh, so here's the thing. Uh, I don't <laughs> understand what in God's name they were thinking with this premise. This premise is without a doubt one of the biggest missteps I've ever seen in terms of pairing a character with a situation 
like just base situation that makes sense. Like I think of something like the George Lopez show where he's essentially playing himself, right? He's playing himself. He goes and works in like a warehouse, like an automotive warehouse, but he's playing himself. So it, it kind of writes itself. It makes sense. If it was George Lopez as the pilot of an of an airliner in the 50s and that's the TV show, it'd be like, this is like some sort of weird thing that makes no sense. And this is that exact setting. Why would you take fish and put him as a, as a a owner of a halfway house for wayward teens. What in God's name about fish in Barney Miller signaled to anybody this guy needs to be around children as a base premise for the show? Because, uh, dear God in heaven, this was a really bad choice. Uh, the the premise alone is is uh is an affront to good sensibility. And I will tell you, this is one of the most unfunny things I've ever seen. Like unfunny, like we, we've talked about this before, like comedies are really hard to talk about because for the most part, it's like, hey, remember that one part? And then we quote it. Remember that? Like when we did Caddyshack it was like us quoting the movie for like 30 minutes is what it felt like. Comedies are hard to talk about, but bad comedies are easy to talk about because bad comedies, I think, are the worst kind of movie. A comedy that's bad is just the worst because it's like it's like with something like Modern Problems, which we covered on our Chevy Chase podcast. When a movie is so unfunny, it's like it's like having your teeth filed down with this fucking rusty spoon. There's just nothing enjoyable about a bad comedy. And what makes it worse in this show's case, they put a laugh track in like, fuck you guys. Oh, fuck it's off. It's so not even deep. funny. There's no laugh. Or, like the laughter that's being injected here is fucking fake on top of everything else, because none of this shit is funny. It's not even chuckle worthy it's not funny there's nothing funny about this premise because Abe Vigoda is so one note like his character was one note in Barney Miller and now it's like the the character's been exposed as like it's just a one note character that has no part in his own show no he seems like he doesn't want to be here which <laughs> makes it very tough I mean like yeah I, I would say like uh um Archie Bunker was a miserable human being but he was in his place, he had his chair, he had his television, he had Edith to get him beers, he had Gloria to control, he had that that numbskull meathead to just you know deride the entire time. He was having an okay time. Meanwhile, Phil Fish is just like, I'm miserable at work, I'm miserable at home, every joke that I tell is going to be about how miserable I am. I'm not going to be able to get into the bathroom because, yes, we're still doing the bathroom humor with him. I mean, he basically is like a cameo player on his own show a lot of times. He just comes in to be like, I'm an, uh, I hate everything. And that's it. It's like, OK. And then these kids, I don't want to follow these kids at all. Even even Lenny Barry as Mike, who I think is supposed to be the attractive one, I guess. Like the Fonzie? Uh, the Fonzie? The yeah, Fonz like, standing? <laughs> he's more like the Grim Brady, you know? Oh, I, mean, I thought he was just Fonzie adjacent or attempted Fonzie adjacent. Uh, like, oh, I'm a cool guy. Hey, he, I'm going to steal a car. Hey. He's not even, he's not even Chachi. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And all these kids, they suck. Like, yeah. Lenny yeah. They suck the hard. Car. You know, uh, they think that uh, Victor's uh, burning down a house a couple of doors down. They think he's a pyromaniac. I'm just like, and the person. This is the worst character for me of all of them. Barry Gordon as Charlie. He oh. is the, I guess he's a social worker who is living in the house with them, which is a weird thing as well. And or, he is or, terrible. or depending on how you look at it, very hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Phil, oh, Phil Fish. Oh, yeah. They, I wish I could do a, I wish I could do a Woody Allen. I can't. I can't. That's what he's That's trying to what do. he's doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> well, with the thing in, you know, well, Mr. Fish, you need to give these kids some room to breathe here. And I'm like, they're oh kids. My they're God. just normal kids. Oh. It must have been surreal for you because doesn't he do one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle voices? He does. He does the voice of Donatello, my favorite turtle, too, on top of everything else. So when I heard him for the first time, I was like, oh, uh -huh. <laughs> oh no, my favorite turtle is in this awful show as a Woody Allen impersonator. Like, what is going on in this fucking show? It's the it's a mishmash of all these weird 70s isms. 
that don't work. And it's and and then once you get to the second season, all the kids are like ten, all of a sudden they're like ten years older. Like it looks like they're all of a sudden like they've all been aged up ten years because John Cassisi is now an adult. Todd Bridges looks like and they all look like adults all of a sudden. And and then the second season somehow worse than the first season. The oh, episodes yeah. I watched in the second season are worse than the episodes yeah. in the first season because in the first and- season at least they're somewhat cute precocious kids now they're like shithead teenagers well it's not like a lot of time passed between these seasons because this whole thing lasted from february 5th 77 to may 18th 78 so it's like 14 months you know and like i said this was a season and a half so the first season was 13 episodes i think and the second one was 22 there were 25 or sorry 35 episodes altogether Maybe they had these things shot a little earlier than they put them out or something. That's yeah, what it I looks agree. like. I noticed how those kids age up and I was just like, whoa, how does this happen over basically a summer? You know? Yeah, no, that's what I was saying. Like Todd Bridges and John Cassisi look like fucking adults oh, all wow. of a sudden. It's and look again, it doesn't help any of this because this let's, you know, because again, this show is so hard to talk about. I, I was thinking about this while I was watching it. I wanted to ask you as kind of as kind of a fun aside here, something we've never done. I wanted to ask you, in comparison to this idea, take another character from Barney Miller and put them in another sitcom like this that would be as bad. I want to hear what you would come up with as like the next worst thing, because this is pretty bad. Like this, this premise is so fucking vaulted from the front that I can't understand how this made it past the drawing room board. Like for real. Cause like this yeah. premise is so bad. It's, it's shockingly, it's shockingly bad just on the face of it. Even the idea that fish has to spend time around Bernice is a bad idea. Given the way that they interacted in the actual original show. Like I would never have watched the original show and go, Oh yeah, I want to see more of Bernice and fish together. Like Jesus Christ. What? Yeah. And poor Florence Stanley, she's the best part of this whole show. Correct, but 100%. She, she, I mean, she, she's the best part of a really bad show. I mean, she deserves so much better than what this show is. And yeah, as far as a, oh gosh, I can't even imagine. Because I'm trying to think of like all the bad spinoffs that happened. Like taking Enos out of um, uh, the, the Dukes of Hazard and giving him his own show was a really bad mistake. I'm trying to think of some of the other like, oh, weirdo, like Jody loves Chachi. What if yeah, it was like a those. Scanlan show? Oh my god! Well, <laughs> yeah, and he even it's not Scanlan in this one, but that actor does show up in here. Yeah, and like so many of these actors are from Barney Miller. Even um, uh, oh god, I'm blanking on his name already. Uh, Barry um, Gordon. Barry Gordon also you know showed up in in uh, an episode of Barney Miller. So it's like they took all of these actors that had been on the show and just said, oh, we're going to place you in this new show. You're going to be you know, so happy to be in Fish. Shooting right down the block from Barney Miller, I'm sure. Like, you know, shooting on one sound stage over. Yeah, I, I was I was trying to think about what would be an, an equally flawed and absurd and I guess just not great premise. Like, I would have to think anything with like, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, something with Scanlan would feel like a pretty dumb idea in terms of like, why would anyone do it? I mean, like, I obviously, you know, Gregory Sierra got his own show spun off. I mean, not from Barney Miller, but I mean, it ends up being kind of Barney Miller adjacent because it's what like a it's he's they're like it's like ambulance show, right? Like it's right. Yeah, I think it's a hospital show. And then, yeah, Danny Arnold produced it. I want to say. Yeah. Yeah, so like yeah. like a like a Jack Sue spinoff show would have been like a really oh bad God. idea, or like even a even a Wojohowicz show. I mean, obviously, I mean that's probably it. Like Wojohowicz's his own show. That was a thing that we also had to see. I don't know. Is this or that worse? Is this worse or is that worse? Oh gosh, I mean, we talked about how unfunny it was. I mean, at least the Wojo thing was only two episodes, and this is thirty five. Yeah, this was a lot of money spent by somebody to make this fucking show. Which and then on top of I don't even understand how it got picked up for a second season. The first season was so bad. Maybe it was a contractual obligation thing. Maybe that's what was ordered was two seasons. Oh, I, I, I don't know. Like, that's the thing about this show. It's 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 one of those shows that's kind of lost on top of everything else. Like, there's an entire season of the show that you really can't find right. anywhere. And so, I mean, again, is it? 
is it unfortunate that this show is really bad? No, because you've already alluded to plenty of spinoff shows from the 70s and 80s that are spinoff shows from characters from uh, shows that are good. And then the varying degrees of success that has had beyond that, like at the end of the day, this was a thing that they were doing like all the time. And some of them worked and some of them didn't. And I, I, I don't. I don't have enough knowledge to say more worked than didn't or either way, but I will say this one does not work. No, no, not at all. Yeah, it's interesting to look at the history of television in the 70s and see which shows were spinoffs of other shows. Like Norman Lear had a real touch for that. So, you know, some shows that people wouldn't even think that they were spinoffs like Maud or The Jeffersons or... Well, yeah, Archie Bunker's place, that makes a lot of sense. But there were, a lot, gosh, there were Gloria spun off of that. But like, Gloria wasn't that good. Maud was fucking fantastic. You know, the Jeffersons was what it was. I mean, there were some some good ones and some bad ones. When you think that like Mork and Mindy spun off of Happy Days, you know, and Laverne and Shirley. And I'm sure. Was well, it I'm Happy Days a spin off? No, no, Happy Days was kind of like a, it was almost a pilot for, from Love American style because they did that one episode that was somewhat similar but not a hundred percent but yeah it was pretty much like a almost a secret pilot inside of love american style well and, and you know i'm i i looked at some lists of some shows because again I, i'm a little younger than you obviously and and i don't know all of them but looking through the list like a lot of these shows are spinning off from things that are really famous like you said happy days I, I not i guess not i love lucy but i mean there's a i, I guess technically mary tyler moore Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, all in the family. Like you said, oh, I mean, gosh. Barnaby Jones even is technically a spinoff show from canon. Like, you know. I mean, yeah, Mary Tyler Moore, she spun off Rhoda, which was a success in itself. Phyllis, which wasn't that successful. Uh, I guess Lou Grant, you could say, is a spinoff of it. Technically, it is. Yeah. Different. Uh, different tone to it well so yeah. is this though right like that's the thing about this show versus fish fish versus barney miller this show's tone is fucking weird on top oh, yeah. of everything else i don't understand the tone of this show because it's not funny i, I don't understand no. how it could be this unfunny and i think you know we we've always heard this you know the, the gag of like you never work with kids and you never work with animals yeah uh yeah, th this is why. This is why. I, I yeah. genuinely think this is why. This show is so loaded with kids that it's uh, like, and the kids are so unfunny that this is, yeah, this is why you don't have a children's show with adults. I mean, it does remind me a little bit of the Brady Bunch, but if the Bra if the Brady kids were all fellas, you know, like yeah. if I didn't give a shit about any of those kids and really only wanted to see Mrs. Brady and Alice, that's like the only characters that I cared about. It'd basically be this, like, and if I openly hated all of the Brady kids, I guess is the other thing. Yeah, they're really poor. I mean, the problem is they're really poorly written. All yeah. the kids are really poorly written. They're all really obnoxious. Like, there, there's nothing likable about any of the ch child characters in this show. And that is a shame because we spend, like you've already alluded to, so much time with them. They're the main characters of this show. That's called Fish. Yeah. Like, yeah. what in God's name? What are they thinking? It's interesting that in the first episode, they're just moving into this house and they're talking about how they, you know, Fish wants to go back to his apartment and then Bernice moves all the furniture over and it's just a huge mess. And I kept wondering, like, is this going to be a mess for the entire season? No, it's not. But the house is just dingy and nasty kind of thing. But yeah, we, we start off almost every single episode with the kids and them getting into trouble it's really bizarre. There is a uh, one episode where Dietrich shows up and he is so unfunny in this episode. He's just there to react against stuff and he doesn't have that many good lines. And it's like, what are you guys doing? Not writing right for Landisburg. Like he is one of the funniest characters of, as we've said, there is an episode season one, episode 10. And it says Hal Linden is in this episode. I watched it. It's literally Bernice calling Barney and you just cut to him in his office. I think he says like two lines and hangs up the phone and then gives this like little funny look. That's it. Like that's the tie to Hal Linden in this entire series. It's crazy. Yeah, that uh, I, I saw that as well. And uh, what in God's name? I mean, it's 
It's yeah, it's one thing to have your show with with a spinoff show not be great, but it's another thing to then bring characters from the original show in and have them be unlike the versions of the characters that they're portraying in that original show. Like what? It's yeah, yeah it, it it I mean, if anything, and this is honest to God, I think if anyone listening to this wants to embark on this journey with us that we've gone on to watch some of this show, I think if anything, this show gives me a better appreciation for fucking how well written Barney Miller is because mm-hmm. this show is one of the worst written sitcoms I've ever seen. It's criminal. I mean, again, it's criminally unfunny and a sitcom being criminally unfunny and getting two seasons is yeah, it's shocking and a bit much. So yeah. And again, having the characters from Barney Miller show up, the Landisburg thing, I think for me is the worst affront because oh, yeah. he actually shows up. It's not just like a cutaway that they filmed on the set of Barney Miller, which is, right. <laughs> which is just, I mean, frankly, the funniest fucking thing. Like I, I hope Hal made, I hope Hal made SAG minimum for that day because he deserved it. Cause that shit's hilarious. Like, yeah, I was wondering what it was going to be. And the fact that Landisburg showed up like kudos to him, maybe it was like a contractually obligated thing. I hope he got paid well for it, but yeah, Hal Linden really, um, what's the term phoning it in literally. Literally, literally. <laughs> I don't blame him. I don't blame no. him. I mean, look, like, uh, you know, we have uh, we have not gotten a chance to speak to either Hal Linden or Max Gale. I would I mean, I'm sure if we got a chance to talk to them, we would ask them, you know, about this show and, you know, just mention it. And I I don't presume to know their feelings, but I think they would have to know this show isn't good. Like, oh, yeah, you know. Maybe thankfully Hal Linden was lucky enough to not have to be on it very much is kind of what it feels like. I mean, it's a, it's not like they're not trying. I mean, it's just they're trying, but it's just it misses every single time. All of these jokes miss. The pathos misses. I don't care about any of these people. And by this point, I don't care about fish. You know, like I said, I just care about Bernice and that's it. I'm like, yeah, Bernice, leave this guy, you know, like get, get out of here. Take, maybe take the kids and go because you seem to enjoy them. But I don't know. It just feels like she deserves a better life. I feel like I should, should, uh, you know, have one of those, uh, mind eraser things from, uh, men in black and give that whole like speech to Edgar's wife, you know, just like go out, you know, enjoy yourself, get a makeover and and clean up this house because damn yeah get yourself a nice piece of ass Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. fish is a miserable sack of shit and that's the other thing that i think i mean we've kind of talked about it a little bit but i think this is probably the opportunity now i I think to since this is the this i think is literally the last time we're ever going to really talk about him on on our barney miller show that we've been doing um this also i think reinforced to me how glad i am that abe vagoda has been gone from barney miller for as long as he has been, because this show, whenever he is on screen, the show is worse for it. Yeah. He's Which is so strange because we liked him so much at first. At first, yeah. but his character's one note, and that note yeah. is just like played over and over and over and over again. This show, like you said, it's always the same note. He's always doing the same thing. It's always the same reaction. It's like, how can this be the case? How can this have been the way this show was written? This character has no emotional range whatsoever. And even the moments where they attempt to do it are completely undercut because a Bogota is not believable. He's mm-hmm. it, it, you just he's he's too curmudgeon y and written into a corner as a character at this point for it to be anything other than this one note laid over and over again over everything else. Nothing else is really harmonizing, but it's a discordant tone that you can hear every time he shows up because he drags the show down with his miserable energy. Mm. And you know, it, like every episode of Barty Mellow, well, I think when they do a fade out quite a bit, but I want to say that there's a lot of like freeze frames at the end and Abe Vigoda just telegraphs the freeze frame so much. He'll like put his hand on a, on a balustrade or something and just be like, huh. And like take a big breath and let it out. And then boom, the, <laughs> the uh, uh, freeze frame happens. And I'm just like, are you that lazy that you have to prep yourself for the freeze frame here? Like, is this supposed to be funny? The very end shot is you just a rum thing and then freeze frame. But that's how they end a lot of these episodes. And like, they don't even know how they end the episodes. There's a lot of times where I'm like, well, you didn't even resolve the situation. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that, and that is the, I mean, to your point, that is the other thing about this show that really 
is 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 hard to deal with is that the the stories go nowhere oh, and they're yeah. so they're so one note and samey that yeah it is just these kids getting in trouble okay these kids getting in trouble okay like how is that it mm-hmm. how can that be it like h- how can that be all this show is for 36 episodes and that's and that's the that's the biggest crime here is like it, it honestly cuz i watched four or five episodes like all the episodes felt the same even the ones that had the barney miller characters in them are just these kids are little shitheads and you don't want to be around them and you're forced to be around them and that feels like a bad enough punishment as it is but then fish shows up and drags it further down because he's just as miserable as the kids are well it's funny to me because we just watched the episode where fish comes back i think that was the last posted episode we had was him coming back and like you said finding out that jilly um had gotten pregnant and married the baby's father and then to find out that victor got arrested for assault and battery i'm like okay great your your influence was really positive on them fish like why did you even bother to run this halfway house and then apparently for fans of the show Please tell me that there are fans of the show. I mean, every every show, every movie has a fan out there, right? Like someone's favorite, favorite productions. Yeah, someone's favorite productions, baby. Our friend so, Ryan, he put he put it out there into the world that that's the case, and I'd be inclined to agree with him. That person who loves this show, good on you. But yeah, why? But, you know, that means that people out there are just like, well, what happened to Mike Loomis and Diane? You know, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the response. Where is Todd Bridges? Homeless right. on the street? No, being he and his little brother got picked up by another white guy, and they're living uh, in a deluxe apartment on the east side. Are they having good times? Uh, yes, or, they are. Are they they're living having some different strokes? Is that what it is? I don't. Yes. I, I, okay, I didn't know which show he's from. Again, being a little younger than you, those oh, are shows yeah. I've never seen. Um, yeah. Is that the one with Willis? He was Willis. Yes. He is Willis. He's okay. the one that constantly is being questioned about what he is talking about. By Mr. Gary Coleman, the yes. galaxy of prawns. Yes. <laughs> God, yeah. Uh, and I honestly, you know, you mentioned uh, uh, Bernice being the best part of the show. I, I think Todd Bridges is okay. He's all right. Yeah. I mean, he's, uh, I don't know how young he is at this point. This is what, 77, 78, and he was born in 65. Wow, 65. 12 years old, 12, 13. Okay. Yeah. A little older than I thought he was. I thought he was like eight, nine years old. It's a pituitary thing. Oh, okay. (laughs) That's what it is. He just has it a little while Gary Coleman had it a lot. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, again, like in the season two, Todd Bridges looks like a fucking adult. So. Yeah, you know, compa- and and John Cassisi looks like a man in the second oh, season. It's worse. Like John Cassisi, like again, you already mentioned it. Like he he's like a little gangster child, and then he becomes just like an insufferable like street dickhead teenager. And it's like, ugh, okay, yeah. I I don't know if they were just like casting call for the most unlikable people possible, but it's kind of what it feels like: unlikable and unremarkable. And man, on top of everything else, the intro to the show. How heartwarming. Oh. How heartwarming. A pagoda standing in the doorway, just acting fucking annoyed, <laughs> being passed by all the kids. Like, cool. And then it's just like shots of him like eating shit and just being mad. It's it, it's so good. It's just, it, it, if you don't want to watch the show, just watch the credits for the show and you will get an entire idea of what this fucking show is. And you never even have to hear a line of dialogue, which honestly see, seems like a seems like a plus especially in barry gordon's case Great. So john john cassisi um was at one point this is according to the imdb trivia so take it with a grain of salt was at one point the director of global construction for city realty services the city group unit that manages its offices and branches the next trivia item december 2015 sentenced to two to six years in prison for money laundering and bribery. Yeah, he's a gangster, dude. Like, he totally is. He is. Yeah, I knew. I actually knew about that uh, because of when we did the Bugsy Malone episode on on the Culture Cast, I think I I think I brought that up because I was like, this guy's like a real life mobster, dude. Like, okay, it's so funny to look at his filmography because Bugsy Malone, like you said, Barney Miller, Kentucky Fried Movie, he makes an right. unedited appearance. Fish, of course, 
And then a TV movie from 1982 called Gemini, which also stars, or really the star of it, is Scott Bayo. So it's like he he tied his star to Scott Bayo for a little while, which is a bad idea. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, Scott Bayo is definitely not even the best part of Bugsy Malone. So <laughs> that's true. Yeah, there, there's a little known actress in there named Jodie Foster. You might have heard of her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonder what she's up to right now. What's she doing these days? And, you know, not doing much, I'm sure. Right? right. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, John Cass. Yeah, I think the worst part about this show actually is John Cassisi, which is unfortunate. Like the he he works so well in Bugsy Malone, but that's because Bugsy oh, yeah. Malone is like a, exactly the kind of movie that an, a character actor who looks like him and talks like him would benefit from it might be it might be some of the most perfect casting i've ever seen frankly in bugsy malone he's one of the best parts of that movie he's better than scott Bayo is in that movie 100 he makes an impression in that movie john cassisi does however that character and then that performance does not work here at all and again he just comes off as this like unlikable shithead street kid in bugsy malone you fully believe that he's like a little mob boss shithead oh, yeah. street kid well, I can see him getting into construction for Citibank, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Jesus. Hey, allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. I mean, he was convicted, but, you know, yeah. as we allegedly. all know, convictions don't matter. So No, no. You can just stack the Supreme Court and you'll get out of anything. You got those, like, I just got those piling up like candy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. John Cassisi, everybody. Yeah, this is... um. This you said it you you put it pretty aptly. This is definitely a bullet that we're taking for our audience because I do not think anyone should spend time with this. And like you already alluded to, you can just watch this on the blue uh, on the on the released DVD if you want to see the first season. But if you really want to spend twelve episodes times twenty minutes worth of time doing that, let let me tell you, I, I can find other things for you to do. Like mm-hmm. if you need suggestions, go clean out your clothes. Go spend time with your loved ones. Do anything other than sit and watch this show because you will not get rewarded for spending time with fish at all. You'll just be disappointed. Take that time. Go on out to iTunes. Leave us a five-star rating and review. We would love you for it. That's better than 22 minutes spent with fish. Apparently, this was canceled before the third season because Abe Vigoda asked for too much fucking money. Yep. Yep. That, uh, you know what they say, that tracks. That does track. Yeah, that's Abe. That's Abe for you. Abe yeah. Pagoda really, uh, you know, Abe Pagoda seems like a guy who really misinterpreted what his worth was. Um, and that's fine. I'm not trying to be mean, but I also don't think that Abe Pagoda in 1977 and 78 was making decisions in a way that benefited his career because he would have benefited from being on Barney Miller the entire show. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is not, you, you know, he probably made more money doing this than he did with Barney Miller. But guess what? Uh, Barney Miller ran for eight seasons. Yeah. This shit ran for two. And then Abe Vigoda didn't really re elevate his career back to a lead in a TV show ever again. Most people my age know him from Good Burger. And most people your age know him from fucking The Godfather, which happened before this. Good Burger happened after this. And Barney Miller happened in between. And guess what? He didn't really do in between The Godfather and Good Burger. Much of anything after Barney Miller. Yeah. And yeah. that's the truth. That's not me being mean or slanderous or anything. That's just looking at the facts in his IMDb and his filmography. Uh, apparently, he's going to be in an episode of Tales from the Dark Side that we're going to watch uh, over on our anthology horror show, which is called Midnight Viewing. So if people are looking forward to that, that's season two, episode 20. So we're going to be creeping up on that one pretty soon here, Chris. I mean, you know, he, he had a little role in Cannibal Run 2 and the stuff and a couple other things. But yeah, not, never kind of recaptured. Uh, the magic of this. Oh, he was in North, one of the worst movies ever made. Um, the Rob Reiner film that ended Rob Reiner's amazing streak of uh, just knocking him out of the park. Rob Reiner has never recovered from that one. Um, is that the one with Elijah Wood? Yes. Yeah. Is that it the is. one where it's like the like the narration is? Is it Tom Hanks narrates the movie or something? I want to say Bruce was or some, some pretty famous actor, right? But it's like yeah. a weird ass movie. No, it's bad. It's a really bad. Yeah. 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 And it was, yeah. It, Alan's Weibel wrote it. He was a writer for Saturday Night Live. So he had kind of a pedigree, but yeah, it was, 
Yeah, I actually saw it in the theater and I couldn't believe how bad it was. As I'm watching it, I'm just like, this is terrible. Oh, Ava Goda was in it. Yeah, yeah. Which is a real shame. And, you know, the other thing that he's known for mostly for me is that website is com because that was a joke for years. He seemed to be dead. And of course, like, you know, we're saying like back here in the mid seventies, we're just like, oh, he's so old, but he's only like not even 50, I think. Right. They're like creeping up on 50. It's like, okay. Yeah. Born 1921. So yeah, he was in his fifties. So he was probably my age when Barney Miller started. I feel I look a little bit nicer. <laughs> yeah, you do. And when did he pass away? Like just recently, right? Like in the last five years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So in the last ten, in the last ten years, yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess the other thing that a lot of people my age would know him from is is the his appearances on Conan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is true. Like him and um. Oh gosh, Gr- Grady from uh, um from Sanford and Son. What what was his name? Whitman Mayo. Mayo was definitely his last name, but yeah, he was all over Conan as well. Like Conan seemed to latch on to older stars from um, uh, uh, sitcoms in the seventies. Did yeah. you know that uh, Abe Vigoda's real life wife, who he married in nineteen sixty eight, and she died in ninety two? Bernice was her name. No, it was not. It was. That's what it says here. Good lord. Yeah. Yeah. You think he hated his real life wife as much as he hated Bernice in the show? I hope not. I hope not. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's it's sad because Abe Vigoda, like I said, it seems like a, a shame that that this is where his career went and that this show ended up being what he wanted to do instead of Barney Miller. Because you know, as much as we don't miss him in Barney Miller, I, who knows what those seasons would have been like if he had been there? Mm-hmm. They might, they might, they might have actually done something with his character and changed his character. There is guaranteed to be no character change if they get his own show like this, and that's the case. His character is exactly who he was in Barney Miller. And that's a problem. If I were to have written this show, and I think we've already talked about this or alluded to this, this should have been Abe Vigoda and Bernice go to Boca. Mm-hmm. And and like, he's like a fucking mall security guard, or he's like a, I don't know, like just something, or he's he nothing. at a bank or something. Yeah, or no, yeah. yeah, he's like a security guard at a bank, or who the fuck knows, just something, or, or, or you know, who knows? Or he's like a you landlord, know. he's like a landlord of like a hotel, or him and Bernice own a bed and breakfast or something, and so you get a little bit of the kind of Barney Miller of it all, where you have weird people coming in that he has to interact with, and he can roll his eyes at weird adults, and then you have Bernice being, you know, her her usual self and and I think that would have been a good idea like them running a bed and breakfast would have been kind of fun like but no instead we've got them running a halfway house for teenagers okay Chris should I watch Good Burger I don't think you'd like it no okay. I don't know like it's I don't know have you seen those kinds of movies those Nickelodeon movies before no but I've seen all the house party films oh I mean I don't know it'd probably be interesting to check out I mean Abe Vigoda's in it enough to warrant you checking it out I just don't know if it's like your thing specifically, but if you're wanting to check it out for Abe Vigoda, he's in it enough to check it out for sure. Mm. Well, Abe Vigoda, hell, I, I'm I'm all about uh, Robert Wall being in there, and of course Sinbad. You know? Yeah, well, Sinbad is in there. Sinbad plays, I think, Keenan and Kel's teacher. Yeah, yeah, and th- that's the other weird thing to think about, like when you think about someone who. To contrast, just speaking kind of randomly, Keenan Thompson, someone who went out on his own and had his own career and has made, I think, a case for being like one of the greatest like improv comedians ever because of his tenure on SNL. He's been on SNL for like 15 years. But contrast that with someone like Abe Bogota, who could not get out of his own way long enough to have his own show actually be successful. And you have someone like Keenan Thompson, who's never really stepped into the spotlight but has been a like a team player on SNL for like God, a long time. It's it's weird the the decisions that people make and how it affects their careers. Because this, I think, Fish is honestly the thing that Abe Bogota did that probably like really hurt his career in the long run. Because I mean, the way he left Barney Miller was not great, and this show ends up being not great. So yeah, it's just all around. I repeat it, not great. Yeah. It's a real shame because, I mean, having grown up with Abe Vigoda and being familiar with his work, even seeing him show up in little things like Joe versus the Volcano or the Cheap Detective, some of these like smaller roles that he did over the years. I I really admired him and liked him and everything, but this whole adventure of Barty Miller has shown me like, ah, eh, yeah, he was a little greedy. His character was a little one note. 
he did this really bad spinoff. And of course, I can't say that it's not not his fault because he wanted the spinoff. He wanted he wanted to go on to bigger and better things than Barney Miller could offer him. Yeah, he really didn't do it though. I mean, he yeah shot himself in the foot. Yeah, it's and it's a shame. Because again, like I said, I think there's a universe where he stayed on Barney Miller and him staying on Barney Miller, I think was the right, was 100% the right call. So Mm -hmm. he didn't do that. And yeah, his career suffered for it. And it's unfortunate, but I don't know if there's much else to say about Fish other than avoid it like the plague. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's 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 one of these things where unlike when we covered the Kolchak reboot, I think that got a bad rap unfairly from a lot of the fans of the show. Just it not being Kolchak, which is fine. It was not meant to be Kolchak the way they wanted it to be. This is completely different. This in terms of contrasting this with that spinoff, quote unquote, because that's the only spinoff for Kolchak you can really even theoretically talk about this is that makes this makes that look like a fucking masterpiece like (laughs) like the the, 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 la jaconda you know what i mean like that's like mona lisa compared to this like this is yeah this is set bound and bad and everything that barney miller is this is not all the way down to having stereotype characters except in this show they're all written like stereotypes and barney miller they're elevated beyond belief this show is just lazy and Hey, a Vagoda got a nice paycheck, though, so there you go. When we come back next month, we are going to be returning to the world of Barney Miller. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to God. be starting the eighth season of the show, the final season of the show, and we will be talking about the episodes Paternity, Advancement, and The Car, and I think we're going to try to get Richard Adam back on here, Richard Adam star and creator of the series Richard Adam's Paranormal Bookshelf, uh, which I'm listening to on a regular basis. I don't know about you, Chris, but uh, highly recommend it, even though it's not on the Weirding Way Media platform, we still listen to other people's shows, especially when they're friends of ours. Yeah, we're not bitter. Why would we be? Every all success helps all of us. And yeah, Richard, uh, Richard's a huge fan of the show. And and uh, no, we sh- we should have invited Richard or Otto to join us on this episode. I That's what we should. Would have. Oh, they would have. Oh, God, can you imagine if we made Richard watch all thirty five episodes, and then we get on here and we're just like, yeah, I just watch a couple. I mean, there's. Let's just say he would not deserve it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know Richard's. Li- I know Richard's listening. We would never do that to you, Richard. We love you, and and Richard and Richard knows better. As a fan of Barney Miller, Richard knows better. Everybody, I think, who's a fan of Barney Miller knows that this show is not great if they've heard of it. And again, I mean, even Otto covers it in his book, which you can find over at Bear Manor Media, which is the from the files of the old one too. And you're welcome, Otto. That's five dollars. <laughs> well, until we come back next month, Chris, what are you working on? Just podcasting over at Weirding Way Media with you, me, and all of our buddies doing all sorts of fun stuff. 80s TV Ladies, which is hosted by Richard Adams' wife, Susan Lambert, and Sharon Johnson. Uh, filmentaries, um, Twisted and Uncorked, all kinds of fun, exciting audio diversions can be found over at WeirdingWayMedia.com, including my weekly movie podcast, The Culture Cast, which I've been doing checks watch because this is an audio medium for almost 10 years now so yeah weirding way media is where you can go to find all of our stuff aside from ranking on bond which can be found on our respective patreons patreon.com slash culture cast or projection booth where the aforementioned richard haddam and you and i talk about james bond once a month and uh yeah we're just now getting into the roger moore years so if you as a fan of 70s tv like 70s james bond movies Come on, join us over at uh, our respective Patreons and uh, help us out because uh, you help us and then you get to listen to our uh, fun, exclusive content. Get new episodes of Stuff Dropped Early. It's fantastic. And if you're over at the Projection Booth uh, Patreon, I try to throw in some of the other shows that, that that we work on here, like a little bit of that Chevy Chase show that we were talking about where we just released an episode of that all about Under the Rainbow I think we've got our Modern Problems episode coming up pretty soon, or it might be Dirty Work gets released first and then some Modern Problems. I don't think that we could do a a Modern Problems under the rainbow back-to-back thing that might kill our audience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like Fish, we might just kill our audience immediately before we even get started, so... Well, thank you so much, Chris, for coming on and talking about Barney Miller. As always, thank you so much to John Walker for our opening theme song. And while our 
our closing theme song, I guess, is actually by the people that made the the uh, the real Barney Miller theme. You're not going to hear the fish theme. That very memorable. That was one other thing that they didn't do. Not a really good theme song. You get that rocking Barney Miller theme song, that crazy guitar, and the horn section just going wild. Fish is just kind of a wet fart. Just like fish. <laughs> <laughs>